Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Software Engineer K, and we have had the ultimate FUD dismissal today. So Al Khan, I can confirm he is alive, regardless of what people have been saying, whether he died or vanished or never existed or, you know, quit working for Ecomi, whatever the FUD was, he's still with Ecomi, he's still alive, and he's dropped some really, really cool news with it for us. So I'm going to be going through some key takeaways from the interview on the Ecomi YouTube page, um, looking at, you know, the price as of today as well, and... There were a few, few, few little interesting parts dropped towards the end as well. So um, some more speculation around that. So without further ado, we'll go straight into the first point that I want to share. Cabbage patch, where the doll's heads were coming out of the cabbage patch. So I asked them, what's that about? And they said, well, that's where we think babies come from. They come from cabbages. So right away, I hit on cabbage patch kids. I made a deal. Trust me, it wasn't very easy to launch this thing. We made one of a kind dolls. We did a, a billion eight hundred million dollars in three years. Uh, wow. Okay, so they made over a billion dollars across the kind of um, early lifespan of Cabbage Patch Kids. So that's just one brand. That just goes to show you just how successful that they can make these brands. Um, and you have to remember that with Ecomi, um, with Vivi, there are going to be multiple brands, not just one brand. So that is really really cool. Um, now this is a really really cool thing that Alcan also mentioned. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. Matter of fact, not to, not to, not to brag, but what the hell? Um, out of the top ten historical successes in the kids business, we have six of them. Wow! So that's not bad. And I'm now, of course, I think in the top ten of historical referencing and everything, we're going to have seven because we're going to have Vivi. Okay, that goes to show you why Alcon joined Ecomi and why he wanted to get involved with Vivi. Across their team, they own six out of the top ten. They own the majority of licensing successes worldwide across history. With Vivi, they believe that's going to be the seventh one. And these guys, they've made it work. They have, you know, amongst them over a century of experience in terms of years. So they are really, really, you know, they saw something that we didn't see. And clearly we can now see, you know, where Vivi's going. And we are still really, really early. Like, I can't stress that enough. We are incredibly early with where vv is going so that just makes me even more excited to get our little netflix mini series we we every meeting we went we took photos we did a little bit of filming we talked about it okay so this is just a little thing that dave you mentioned he's like they kind of want to you know potentially create like a book or even a netflix mini series just you know documenting their whole journey and this is quite common with you know companies later on when they become really big really popular um they tend to have like these kind of origin stories so there was a documentary on mcdonald's for example when they first started um only after you know it became big and so the fact that you know david you can kind of see something like this happening um their plan is to make this mainstream you know whatever people say um this is going to be the first truly mainstream crypto project with a product um Actually, I think it will probably be the first truly mainstream crypto project. Um, and, you know, there are other big projects out there, but VV is one where it's, like, accessible for everyone. Um, there are projects like, you know, Ripple, where it's kind of mainstream for banks, but this is for everyone. So that is really, really cool as well. Um, now, the next point is um, to do with VV's uh, features. And this goes to, you know, this was a question I always get asked. Like, why can't they just release it? You know, why can't we have something rather than nothing? just roll something out for us to test and then and then come to it but at that time you know that's exactly the the tact that we took you know i remember you saying we, we don't want to release something that isn't of the most premium quality that it can be um you know it's a um, testament to the product as well so look now a little earlier you you alluded to cabbage patch kids and uh the way that our community operates they so you heard it there the team they don't want to release things that things that are subpar is because they gain value through being premium they are better than a competition um if you look at how many nfts out there like really popular ones like crypto punks crypto kitties they're literally you know 2d images um with no utility and they are selling for way more than vv nfts and that is just because you know it's the fact that people are speculating on the value of nfts what is truly going to survive are you know nfts which have all sorts of utility all sorts of features and specifically premium ip premium branding you get a pokemon nft for example it's pure speculation here um and it has features such as you know 
breeding for example so there's a nft game called zed run where you can breed um you know horses and then compete and they have different stats um all of this were tied quite well together you have blind boxes in order to get these um so more utility there uh, more kind of like you know functionality you can interact with them in you know a metaverse you can trade them you can battle them uh, gamification all of this utility that is what's going to bring true true value and that is an entirely new industry that they are creating and it's going to be you know an absolutely groundbreaking industry so i'm really really excited about that and just on that point on you know the, i mean we, we try not to speculate too much on pokemon but um there are some synergies with what our concept between pokemon and vivi so let's just have a look at that i felt there was a great synergy between the two of them the three of them is because they all were showing this extraordinary degree of success not in huge not in the numbers but just in the intensity of the demand right the intensity of people who got interested in Pokemon, got interested in Vivi, got interested in Cabbage Patch Kids was immense. And I think we're seeing the same thing, you know, happen now. So that's the reason why I posted. And let me tell you a story. I'll give you a little, a little. So he has drawn some synergy between Pokemon and Vivi. Specifically, when Pokemon was, you know, first around, no one really wanted it. Um, they couldn't really get any kind of like good um airing times for it in terms of the tv show they had to do it at like 6 a.m um and you know david you came along he kind of like did the whole pokemon trading card game licensing for him this was before you know anyone really cared about it and he kind of spoke about you know what really drove to success was partly you know the underlying story behind it, it had the whole tv show and they kind of like really popularized that and it started off at you know a really bad time slot and eventually just became mainstream because people liked it there was you know something that they could relate to with it and that's kind of what they're trying to push with vivi is to have all these premium brands and ips you know as people some people can relate to batman some people can relate to superman some people can relate to you know a uh, unicorn um there's something it's this whole concept that there's something in vivi for everyone and the fact that sometimes people say you know this is a trash drop i don't like it that is why vivi is going to be successful is because you have proven that vivi's model works because you have a different opinion to other people um, and the fact that people have different opinions, if they can capture all of those varying opinions in one product, they can capture everyone. And that is the point. That's why they're going to become mainstream. So, you know, that is really, really cool. Now, on the point of, you know, in capturing everyone, you need a place to bring them all together. And that is where a metaverse comes in. So Al Khan, he kind of teased a little bit on that. Let's just hear what he has to say. Uh, live in your, you know, your family room because your bedroom is full of stuff. I mean, it sounds funny, but it also gives you the ability to take it with you. If you want to share that, and I'm sure down the road, you know, I'm not going to give away any secrets, but under the under when you start seeing what else is being evolved, you're going to get inside that app. You're going to take your friends inside that app. You're going to be able to actually have experiences, which if you did that in a real environment, you'd have to have a theater or a warehouse. If I okay, so he said he's not trying to, you know give anything away but he did give us some you know some some, some pretty good information regarding vivverse because we know that's what they're working on its trademark we know it's going to be a metaverse and he's kind of like clarified you know you can bring people in you can you know interact with them and that is the point of a metaverse is adding another layer of interactivity another layer of you know community within this application and you know games when they're single player as soon as they get some multiplayer aspect the games will blow up and that's essentially what they're trying to do here like right now you know we are kind of separated from each other within our own kind of showrooms and everything but once you can start connecting things together interact with each other that is where vivi is truly going to you know take off that's why they keep saying that we're only at the beginning so you know that is pretty cool um and now another cool point is um there was this question, you know, like, why does Dan appear kind of more than Dave? Like, other people have actually questioned this. So they just wanted to, like, share a little bit on that, which I think is pretty cool. You, you know, myself and Dan, and and th this is why Dan appears more on camera, is because every time I'm on camera, I, I somehow <laughs> will leak something by mistake. Okay, now... If you go back to, you know, the interview that I discussed with Reese, um, I did discuss the whole point on language, like they have discussed this. Um, they try, you know, to like not promise anything. Um, they, they say, you know, we're aiming for this time, we're targeting this time. Um, and Dave is aware of his, you know, he can be overly excited. You know, he, he's an enthusiastic person and that enthusiasm sometimes can result in, you know, some things which might be kind of kind of leaked and then that becomes speculation and then people start announcing things on behalf of Yukomi and then you know that's where we get the whole 
hey, they promised us this, but they didn't deliver. It's like, you know, when you go back to the source of it, it's like not really. Um, you know, sometimes, yes, Dave does say things, but it's with a, you know, positive intent. Now, the next one, um, Al Khan, he compares Vivi to a really, really well-renowned company, um, Apple. So um, let's just have a look and see what he says with regards to Apple's model versus Vivi's model. That's a funny word. You have to see them. And I think, you know, I look at the Apple model. Apple doesn't show anything until it's shipping. You know, they literally, they make an announcement on a new iPhone, and that new iPhone's in the stores, you know, a week or 10 days later. I think this is what's great about Vivi. We're not, they don't overpromise. Then they don't, you know, they don't have to worry about under deliver, over under delivering. Okay, so that's really, really important because Vivi um, versus a lot of other projects where they don't have a product yet and they just build hype and hype. They go straight to the marketing because um, people kept complaining, hey, when's the marketing coming? And they don't realize, you know, there are projects out there which don't have a product. Um, they're not planning to build an amazing product. They're just trying to build up as much hype to profit off as much as possible. Uh, Vivi is looking around to be around for a long, long time. They're looking to go mainstream. That's why all these brands and licensors, they're on board because they know that their brands are going to be well protected. They're in good hands. They're going to be sticking around for a long, long time. So I think that's important. Now, yes, sometimes people do certain, you know, people they can get excited um dave you i know he's like accidentally um given away a bit more information than he should have and then i get speculated and then people start announcing things on behalf of ecomi um and which is what happened with you know the uh big big announcement um there were people saying hey it's gonna be fifa hey it's you know gonna be pokemon etc um and then people you know they take that as fact and it doesn't deliver and then you know they kind of feel let down so um i think moving forward that they are going to be more careful but again on the opposite end of the coin the opposite side of the coin people are going to say hey they're not being transparent enough they're not telling us enough well you know you can't really have it both ways so um that is really really important to take into consideration now the next one is there are going to be a lot more feature enhancements coming to vivi because this is something that a lot of people have been asking for is hey when are we going to get all these cool new ar vr features so let's just have a look at that uh you know we just now need to look at all the other opportunity that we have hundreds of you know other brands contacts in different field all reaching out to us i mean we, we were talking to some of the largest company yesterday with technology providing how to enhance the okay so dave you he's spoken a lot about brands he's talking spoken a lot about you know their big business partners coming on board tech partners um and he's in discussion with them so Yes, a lot of people have been complaining about, hey, you know, there's all these like cool Google AR core features, occlusion, you know, we, why can't we have the option to um, have VR display so we can use our phones and headsets, etc. Now, they want the experience to be as good as possible, which is why they're kind of holding on, off on that aspect. And also they want to prioritize the brands first, the content first. So, yes, we are going to get all of this stuff, um, but it's going to be extremely polished. It's going to be, you know, absolutely at the pinnacle of this industry. And that's what's going to get, you know, more people on is that premium experience. Like they will outshine, you know, the competition. And that's why, you know, they do well, because we've seen, you know, when a product gets rushed to market, it kind of spikes a little bit and then it just doesn't stick around. You know, there are apps out there that kind of have done similar to what Vivi's done, where they just never really stuck, even with huge influencer marketing. So uh, the other point that I want to just talk about is um, VV metrics and growth and kind of where they're going with that. So um, we know that VV obviously they had to, they, they grew very, very fast. They had to spend a lot of time on the actual um, performance upgrade. So let's just hear a little bit on that. Brands coming on board will help us to expand that reach, but are there any particular growth strategies we have in place or, or that we'll be looking at? Yeah, I mean, to date, we've had, um, you know, over 350,000 downloads of the app, which is, you know, very, very promising, <clears throat> considering we're uh, only what, five or six months into the uh, into the launch. Um, and, you know, obviously, for, from our perspective, um, you know, we want to get VV into the hands of as many users as, as we can possible. Um, I mean, it, it is funny, you know. Um... Okay, so obviously they had way more growth than they expected, but they are looking to get Vivi, you know, mainstream into as many people as possible. And the fact that they're on their year three numbers of growth right now, um, that just goes to show that, you know, similar to Pokemon, where there was that intensity there that Alcon mentioned earlier, um, there's an intensity of early adopters, and that shows that there is potential for huge growth. Um, same thing with Pokemon. When they first aired it, they only had a 6 a.m. time slot, and loads of people were watching it so then they could just uh from there just grow and that's exactly what's gonna happen with vivi where you know there's loads of us who you know 
buy into these different um, collectible drops and everything sells out in like a second. So yes, they are going to start to expand, grow, and it's going to become truly, truly mainstream. Now, lastly, there was one little bit of information that Alfred Khan dropped at the end. Um, and this just makes me really, really positive. And this just goes to a little bit of speculation that I wanted to uh, just talk about here. On the words, any cliffhangers you want to leave anyone with? Uh, no. <laughs> get on the app earlier because you're going to get sold out much quicker than you think. So you better get on that app first. Get on that, you know, get your finger on the button, especially this coming Thursday. Okay, so Alcon, he, if those of you didn't hear, he said, get your fingers on the app button quick, especially this coming Thursday. Now, that's really, really cool from Al Khan himself saying, especially this coming Thursday, we're going to have, so that implies there's going to be something big. And for those of you who were in the AMA with um, Frank Kozik on Clubhouse, or specifically those of you who weren't, Dave View, he did say, they have a new um, brand kind of um, coming on board soon um, and they have something that's going to appeal to a lot of the kind of like younger female audience out there. Now, my initial speculation was Barbie because Mattel was leaked, they basically name dropped Barbie. But now I have another kind of um, brand which I'm speculating, which I think could definitely be possible for this upcoming Thursday. And if you have a look at the Ecom YouTube page, there is now a video that, correct me if I'm wrong, is no longer there. It's the video where they showcased the Ecomi Collect app and in that app uh, showcase, it displayed the TARDIS, but it also like from Doctor Who, but it also displayed Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty is Sanrio. We know that Sanrio has been at licensing expos, the Japanese licensing expos as well, like pretty much the exact same time that Vivi Ecomi has been there for the last few years. On top of that, we know that Hello Kitty has a huge audience, younger female audience specifically. And the fact that they have removed it, that video that showcased Hello Kitty, because some people are saying, hey, they it could just be a placeholder. But you know what? The stuff that they've displayed, um, which then get, then eventually got revealed as real. Like people said the same thing about Marvel. It could just be a placeholder and we got Marvel. Like I don't think they were using these images as placeholders myself. I think they actually had these brands and they were using it. So yeah, what I think is could be coming is Hello Kitty. So have a look, try and find that video yourself but we can discuss this a little bit more in depth later on. Now, lastly, all of this wrapped up together, it, hasn't had an, it has had an effect on the price. So as you guys can see here, we were trading in this zone initially. Uh, we broke out, we wicked back down to this um, previous resistance, which then became a support. And we have kind of hit this region of the 0.3 cent region. And we haven't seen that for a while. We haven't been in 0.3s for a little while consistently. Yes, we did touch that when we had the Marvel news, but then we kind of dumped straight away. And that volume was very inorganic it was just one huge spike up one huge spike down now we can see the volume is a lot more consistent it's growing a lot more steadily it's more organic so this to me implies that there are more you know natural like real people buying right now like not one single person hoarding you know omi tokens it is spread out and that's exactly what we want to see is organic growth because that's what's going to lead to long-term adoption of this project so that's pretty much everything I'd like to go through with you guys today. Um, as always, please do like and subscribe to support the content. I'll keep you guys updated with anything else I find out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.